So this is just going to be an overview of the types of work that we mentioned before. Um, and so what we're going to be dealing with is stuff like kinetic energy and potential energy. So we're just going to see what those are. Okay? So the first thing we're going to be looking at is kinetic energy. And that's the work of motion. And so what that means, we can see really in the equation. So kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. And m is the mass and v is the velocity. Okay? So we know that something has to be moving in order to have kinetic energy. If, if v equals zero, kinetic energy is going to be zero. Okay? So that should be pretty clear that this has to be energy of motion. So whenever we're dealing with work, Work is going to be in units of joules, and joules are a unit of energy. Okay, so all types of work is going to be energy. So kinetic energy um, is going to be one half mv squared. And this v, they don't always have to give you um, the actual velocity. They may have you uh, solve for the velocity using some of those equations that we saw before with projectile motion. So just be aware of that. All right. So now we're going to be looking at potential energy, um, and this is stored energy. So one thing to note is that there's two types of potential energies. There's gravitational as well as elastic. And in this lecture, we're going to be looking at gravitational. And in a future lecture, we'll be looking at elastic potential energy. And just to let you know, elastic potential energy is stuff dealing with springs and rubber bands and gravitational potential energy is something dealing with changes in height. Right? So we'll see that right here, that the gravitational potential energy um, equals mgh. Right? Um, so one thing to note about potential energy is that it's relative. Right? So what do I mean by that? It means that we can set height as an arbitrary value, okay? What we're mainly dealing with is not the actual potential energy of an object, we're dealing with the change in potential energy. All right, so this is what we're really dealing with, the change in potential energy, and we'll see what I mean by that. All right, so imagine we have this 10 kilogram object right here. All right, we're starting at h equals zero, and that's relative. I'm saying that the ground is gonna be h equals zero, um, and we're moving it up 5 meters. So the change in potential energy equals 10 times 10 times positive 5. Okay? Because we're moving it up, and I'm saying that up is positive. Okay? So I'm saying the forward direction or upward direction is going to be positive. Um, so the change is going to be positive 50 joules Okay, in this example right here. And in this example, I now set that up in the air is going to be h equals zero. So it's again relative. And now when I move it down five meters, this is going to be now um, having a negative five height. Okay. So the change in potential energy equals 10 times 10 times negative five. Okay. So what's most important isn't the fact that a uh, potential energy at this point is say uh, 50 joules because it's not, it has a change in potential energy of 50 joules. Um, but what's important is that change. The change is most important because you can't set um, a particular value of potential energy on a, a particular object because we're just setting that uh, some arbitrary value has a height of zero. But in reality, that doesn't actually have a height of zero. All right? So always just be mindful that uh, potential energy is always is going to be the change in potential energy. So now a little bit more into potential energy. So remember, um, we have conservative forces as well as non-conservative forces. And remember, gravity is a conservative force. Okay? So in our equation, potential energy equals mgh. Because gravity is in this equation, potential energy also has to be a conservative force. So what does that mean? Conservative forces are path independent. All right? So what do I mean by that? So path independent means it doesn't matter what the path was taken. All that matters is the final value. So for example, in this one right here, we have um, an object that's moved from point A to point B. Okay? And let's say this height is going to be 10 meters. Okay? From here to here is 10 meters. I'm going to say from here to here is 10 meters. Okay? Uh, but in this example, we have this same object that's moved to the left and then to the right and then finally up to that 10 meter height. Okay? But the thing is that the potential energies are equal. Okay, so the, the potential energy in these two cases, because um, they moved the same height difference, that's all that matters. It's path independent. I don't care if I moved left and right, up and down. All that matters is that I got from point A to point B, and that was a height of 10 meters. Okay? So the potential energies are equal. I'm going to contrast that to something that is a non-conservative force like friction. Okay? I have an object that say, we're going to move again 10 meters, and again this is going to be 10 meters. All right. In this case, I move from point A to point B just straight across. All right. But in this side, we have 
we go up, then we go down, then we go up a little bit, and then finally to that 10 meters. All right? Will these have the same friction? And the answer is no. So frictions in these two cases are not going to be the same because they're non-conservative. They are path dependent. All right? That means that it depends on the path. The actual friction that is involved depends on the path. All right? So be straight with these two um, path independent and path dependent forces. So now we're going to be dealing with conservation of energy, okay? So conservation of energy is very, very important. Um, it's something that probably your physics teachers drilled many, many times. Um, so pretty much what the equation is, is this right here. So kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial plus uh, the work done by friction equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final, okay? And that breaks down like this um, with one half mv squared, mgh, um, the frictional force is force times distance. Um, and so on and so forth. Okay? So you guys may have been accustomed to, accustomed to learning many different types of conservation of energy equations, but if you memorize this one right here, um, that's pretty much all that you have to memorize um, and it'll, it'll apply to everything. You can just eliminate, if, it, you're, if you're not dealing with potential energy, just get rid of them. And, and if you're not dealing with kinetic energy, just get rid of that and everything will work out. So it's one less thing to memorize. Right? And we'll see how that applies right here. So we have an example right here, so it says that what is the final speed of a 10 kilogram object that slides horizontally 10 meters with a frictional force of 5 newtons, and its initial speed is 5 meters per second. So we have this object right here that it says that it's 10 kilograms, it slides horizontally at 10 meters, and it has a frictional force of 5 newtons. All right? So we see right off the bat that if it's moving horizontally, it's not dealing with any types of potential energies. So what we can do is we can eliminate the potential energy from the equation. And so all we're going to say is kinetic energy initial plus the work done by friction equals the kinetic energy final. Okay? And if we plug that in, everything into the equation, we see that 1 half times the mass, which is 10, vi squared. Um, so that's going to be our v initial. So it's going to be 5 squared. And remember, no potential energy. We just have this uh, kinetic friction, or, or friction done, uh, the work done by friction. All right? And we're going to see that that's force times distance. But remember, this is if we're saying that the distance is going to be in a positive direction, we know that the friction always opposes motion. All right? So we're going to see that the frictional force is going to be negative uh, 5 times the distance that it displaces. This 10 equals 1 half mv squared. And this is going to be m final squared. Right? And if we move everything around, we're going to get our v final equals square root of 15. Right? Um, so it's important to note that from this equation, we were able to um, solve this problem even though we were dealt with more um, variables than, than were needed. Okay? So if you know this equation, you'll be fine for all types of conservation of energy, uh, questions that are dealing with kinetic energy, potential energy, or friction. Right? If you like our videos, be sure to check out our website, mcatforme.com. The videos accompany our free MCAT course syllabus for a three-month study plan. We have the books you should use, the homeworks to do, videos to watch, and chapters to read. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll have new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Thank you.